Good day. Welcome to another session of Fog Accountancy Tutorials. Today we are going to look at company accounts with a special emphasis on the issue of shares. We are going to look at company accounts, how they issue shares and how it is accounted for in the books of accounts. But before we proceed, I would want you to subscribe to the channel. If you are yet to subscribe, please subscribe to the channel. Let us grow together and let us learn and be successful together. Okay, so my focus is to teach you how to account for the issue of shares. I'm not going to do much of the theory on company accounts. I'll leave you to read on company accounts with the definition of a company, the regulation, the types, formation of a company, and what goes into all that. And you can also look at um, maybe concerning the types. Let, let me just talk about a few of them before we can proceed to the accounting aspect. We know that we have, uh, when it comes to companies, companies are organizations that are much larger. If you look at the characteristics of a company, we look at limited liability as one of the key characteristics, even though we have an unlimited company. So we have company that is limited by shares. We have company that is limited by guarantee and also we can have an unlimited company which is usually not common but these are the three types of companies that you can have now you can also look at companies from another angle we can also look at it as a public company or a private company whichever way that you want to look at it from you have to study the characteristics of each of these types of companies so a company limited by shares company limited by guarantee and an unlimited company and then we have a public company and a private company now let me just throw some light into some of them a company itself is an organization that is formed to make profit usually from a pool of funds contributed by shareholders usually or more than you know the law usually permits one person to form a company so far as he can meet all the requirements however companies are usually not run by one pe person it's most of the time a pool of funds from two or more people that comes together to contribute money to run the business for profit now this is different from a partnership in a sense that there are a lot of things that are different in terms of nature from the company and the partnership i would want you to take time and read on that now when we say a company is a public company a public company has so many characteristics one of the key characteristics is that it is allowed to issue shares to the public and that is what we are going to do to account for how they issue shares so they are allowed to issue shares to the public for public to subscribe and become shareholders that is why they are public companies Private companies do not issue shares to the public. And therefore, as a result, usually they have limited number of shareholders. In a company's code of Ghana, it is usually between 1 and 50 people, minimum and maximum, that can form a private company. Okay, And usually they don't allow the transfer of shares to other people and then the issue of shares to the public. The public company usually has a minimum of 1 and a maximum of infinity meaning that public companies sometimes depending on the size they can issue shares and people can subscribe as to a maximum number of shareholders that we cannot fix or determine up to infinity so it means that a public company can actually issue shares to as many shareholders as they want but sometimes they are limited by the regulations of each country where they operate so let us also take note of that so this is what we mean by the public and the private company as far as um, we are concerned for this lesson. And then we also have can look at them from this angle that it could be a company limited by shares guarantee or unlimited liability company. Now that is what I may do for now concerning the theory. But then when I get to the accounting for issue of shares, I'm now going to talk about the theory that relates to the issue of shares. And so let us take this for now and let us do our reading work on that and i'm sure that for the theoretical aspects of company accounts we will be able to get that it is a very broad 
topic when it comes to company accounts it has a lot of theory so take time and read that because it is examinable as part of the accounting work itself so please do that all right now we are looking at the accounting for issue of shares before we proceed let us define a share what is a share a share is the right to the ownership of a company it is the interest of the shareholder in the company and so when a company has shareholders the shareholders own shares the shares is what becomes their right to the ownership of a company now every company that is limited by shares will issue shares to the public especially if it's a public company public companies that are limited by shares have the legal mandate to issue shares to the public now what they do in ghana for example we are regulated by the company's code as amended in 2019 act 992 now what the company's code says for us and for most countries is that the company will have to register with the registrar general of companies now before the company comes into existence it will be registered with the registrar general of companies now the registrar of companies will also register the company giving them something that we call authorized share so that is what i'm going to begin with there are some theoretical aspects when it comes to this the authorized share authorized share you may see that as your authorized share capital or authorized share now what is the meaning of the authorized share the authorized share is the total number of shares that a company has been registered with at the date of registration by the registrar general and so if you go and register your company xyz company limited for example and the registrar general allocates two hundred thousand shares 200,000 shares to you as a company. This 200,000 shares becomes your authorized shares. It means that you cannot issue shares to the public that exceeds this number of shares. This is your maximum limit of, uh, to the number of shares you can issue to the public. That is the meaning of your authorized share. In other words, you have been authorized to issue up to a maximum of 200,000 shares. That is the meaning of the authorized share. And every registered company has their authorized share as stipulated in their memorandum or articles of association. Now, with the authorized share capital, if you have the authorized share to be 200,000 shares, for example, when you are issuing shares to the public, I told you you cannot issue more than this, but you can decide to issue less than that, depending on the capital that you want to raise at that very point in time. Now, take note that when shares are assigned, to a company in a form of authorized shares it can come in two ways it's either that at the date of the registration of the shares by the registrar they can tell you that your shares value or your shares price is let's say five dollars per share so in other words these two hundred thousand reg registered shares you have been told that one is five dollars so when you are issuing the shares to the public you are going to sell to the public at five dollars per share that is the meaning now if this was done at the date of the registration when it was being authorized by the registrar general then we will say that these shares are par value shares so let me say that we have something we call par value shares and then shares of no par value now let me get just get you the difference between the two now Power value shares are shares which had value attached on, uh, to them at the date of registration. Shares which had their values attached at the date of registration. But there are some shares that when it's being registered for you by the registrar of companies, they will not attach any values to it. It means that at the date of issue, the company itself will now assign values to the shares based on the market condition and then demand and supply factors and maybe the performance of the company so when the values are not attached to the shares at the date of registration then we call those shares that they are shares of no power value but when values are attached to them at the date of registration we call them shares of power value and so power value shares are shares that has their values attached to them 
at the date of authorization or registration. And then no power value shares are shares that do not have values attached to them at the date of registration. So that is the difference between power value shares and no power value. Now, let us also move away from authorized share capital to issued share. Issued shares or issued share capital. Now, take note of something. The, I told you that when shares are being authorized and registered for the company, it becomes the maximum number of shares they can issue, but not the minimum. It means that the companies can decide to issue less at a time. So let us assume that the company decides that, okay, I'm now going to issue just uh, 100,000 shares to the public. Okay, now, at whatever price they want to sell it. That is not our focus for now. Our focus is that if you are authorized with 200,000 shares and you are issuing 100,000 to the public, then it means that the portion of the shares that you have issued, which is this 100,000, becomes your issued share capital. If you are issuing out 120,000 shares, it means that you'll be left with 80,000 of your shares. Now, take note. The 120,000 shares that you are issuing out or inviting the public to come and buy and become shareholders becomes the issued share capital. And the 80,000 that is left becomes your unissued or yet to be issued, unissued share capital. So that is the meaning of the issued share and the unissued. The issued share capital will be defined as the proportion of the authorized share capital which has been issued out to the public for them to subscribe. To become shareholders and the unissued share is a portion of the authorized share capital which is yet to be issued out to the public and we do that as and when we need capital and so what is going to happen is that if you issue your 120,000 and it comes with a value you are going to operate with that money as capital for a long time let's say you want to expand the business and you need more shares okay you, uh, you need more capital sorry you can issue more depending on the amount that you need to expand and you can issue you can decide to maybe issue 50,000 shares out of the 80 you'll be left with 30 on issued share as time goes on if you think you need you can go back and issue the 30,000 and that will be all you cannot issue any more shares to the public after that because you have used all your authorized share if you think that you need to issue some more shares to the public you would have to go back to the register registrar sorry you may have to go back to, you have to go back to the register of companies and then negotiate with the registrar and if the deal goes through and the, and the agreement is reached and the registrar decides to extend or expand your share base or your authorized share capital fair enough but until you are approved by the registrar in the law you are not supposed to issue more than your authorized share capital that is the meaning of the unissued and the issued share then that will also take us to subscribed share capital and then unsubscribed now subscribe shares capital now let's assume that like i was explaining the company decides to issue 120,000 shares to the public for subscription. Now, if the public actually applies for 80,000 or let's say 90,000 of these shares, you, are, you, you advertise that you are selling your shares, a total of 120,000 shares, and people start applying to subscribe. So, oh, give me 100. Another person applies for 1,000 shares. Another person. So you sum up all the shares that people have applied for and are willing to buy. And you realize that they have applied for a total of 90,000 shares. Meanwhile, you actually, is that you're advertising for 120,000. Then the 90,000 shares that the people have actually taken up or have agreed to buy or have applied for becomes your subscribed share capital. This is what they have actually applied to buy. So they are subscribing to 90,000. And the extra 30,000 that you want them to has not been subscribed for. So please take note. Subscribe share capital is a proportion of the issued share, not the authorized share. The proportion of the issued share capital that the public has actually subscribed to. Okay, so 
the balance that is left, which is the 30,000 shares, becomes your unsubscribed share capital, meaning that you are willing to sell, but nobody is buying. That is the meaning of unsubscribed share. It's not as if it's authorized. This time, you are issuing it out, but people are not taking it up. So we call it unsubscribed share. They are yet to subscribe to the shares. But the subscribed share capital is how much they have actually come and they are ready to buy and take up to become shareholders. So that is the difference. Okay, so let us also look at paid up capital. Paid up share capital and then unpaid up share capital. The paid up, the paid up share capital is the proportion of the subscribed shares. Okay, so we see that it builds up like that. The issue share is a proportion of the authorized share. Subscribed share is a proportion of issue share. So paid up is a proportion of the subscribed share. So the proportion of the subscribed share that the shareholders has actually paid. So they have subscribed for 90,000 shares. Usually they pay in installments. And so maybe you are expecting a total of um, $90,000, if that is $1 per share. Now, if they have actually paid $70,000, okay, then it means that the extra $20,000 has not been paid. And so, based on the agreement and the negotiation with the installments plan, you say that the paid-up share capital is a proportion of the subscribed share that the shareholders has actually paid for. So, you have subscribed but you are paid for that amount. And the unpaid, unpaid up share is a proportion of the subscribed share that the shareholders are yet to pay. So that is it. Now, since the unpaid yet to pay, then it means that there is an instance where we we'll call them to come and pay. So we will also have called capital, called up share capital, and un uncalled share capital, uncalled. Now, you see that as we move on, you realize that when we, they apply and we allot the shares to them, we, there are times where we have to call them to come and pay. We call it calls. Now, when we make their calls and they come and pay, then maybe to complete what we are supposed to take in total. Now, as long as they are waiting for us to call them, they will not come and pay that part of the uh, subscribed capital. The proportion of the subscribed capital that the shareholders has been called to come and pay. It's what we call the called up share capital. And then the uncalled capital is when the, that part of the subscribed shares, which they are yet to be called to come and pay. So these terms are not very difficult. They follow in that order. So let us try and understand that as we move to the double entry for the issue of shares. Actually, we are going to do double entries. And then we are going to also prepare general entries when we are asked to. So we are going to look at how to do all that. The double entry for the issue of shares and then also we are going to look at how to prepare the general entries and the statement of financial position extract if we are asked to do when it comes to the accounting for the issue of shares it is all about the double entry concept so we are going to apply the double entry rule regarding the issue of shares and then we are going to look at how the shares are issued the process that it goes through the stages <coughs> The stages that it goes through. I told you earlier that it's going to be done in installments, the payment for the shares. And so we are going to create accounts for all those installments. And then we are going to do a double entry for them. And after that, we'll know how to close off the accounts. Now, when shares are issued, it means that we have invited the public to subscribe for shares. And they are going to apply. Now, I told you that values will be attached to the shares at the time of issue. And so if one share is, let's say, $5, then it means that when they are applying, we charge them. But I told you that that $5 per share will be paid in installments. That amount of $5 per share will be paid in installments. And this is how the installment is going to be done. Now, usually, when you are applying for shares, you are supposed to pay a part of the share value. So if it is $5 per share, the, the 
it depending on the policy of the company at the time of issue you'll be required to pay a part of the five dollars on the application and it is not automatic that when you apply for shares they will give you the shares as a shareholder now the process of giving you or uh, giving you the shares to become a shareholder is called allotment and so you are going to pay some money on application and then you are going to pay another money on allotment so what they usually do is that sometimes they don't need the money all at once and so they will split the five dollars if it is five dollars that you are supposed to pay they can say that on application when you are applying for the shares you pay two dollars okay and on allotment when the shares are being allotted to you pay one dollar fifty cents for example so you see that you have paid a total of three dollars and fifty cents then you'll be left with one dollar and fifty cents to pay to make a total of five dollars for the value of the share so they can allot the share to you become a shareholder then the extra one dollar fifty cent that you have to pay they may call you later to come and pay that now the calls can be done once or twice or thrice or even more depending on the policy at that time so what they are going to do is that if they call you let's say it's a first call they are calling you to come and pay one dollar you are left with 50 cents more to pay they can call you a second time that is a second call to come and pay just the 50 cents that is left and then that will make a total of five dollars and so what i'm trying to say is that application for the issue of shares does not require that you pay the full value of the shares on the time of application no what, because it is likely that the shares will not be allotted to you the process of assigning the share to you and telling you that we have accepted to give you share to become a shareholder so take this share as your right of ownership for the company that process is what we call allotment okay and application is when you are applying for the shares and then these calls most of the time they leave some of the money with you and they call you as and when they need it some companies would give you the date for the course when they think they will be needing the money and so it's like a flexible payment time even though you are going to buy shares to be a shareholder you are not going to pay all the shares outrightly you are going to pay them in installment and they can spread it like this the cost could be more than even two sometimes it's just one call sometimes there is no call at all it depends on the policy of the company like i said earlier so this is the process of share issue now take note that in with each of these installment plans or dates for the payment of each of these there will be money that is coming into the business because the shareholders or potential shareholders are going to pay these monies most of the time they come at different dates so each of these dates will bring some money into the business and these monies most of the time are going to be paid into the bank account now i'm going to teach you the double entry for all these things for is the focus is not really even on the money for now the focus is on how to do the double entry now when they are applying for shares and they are paying two cd per share depending on the number of shares for example an applicant that is applying for 100 shares will be paying 100 times the two dollars now when they are applying for shares and they are paying two dollars per share the focus is not really on the application for example an applicant who is applying for 100 shares will be paying 100 times two dollars on application that makes it two hundred dollars for that person to pay on application and so when shares are being allotted to if all the hundred shares are being allotted to that particular shareholder then on the date of allotment is he or she is going to pay a uh, hundred shares by one dollar and fifty cent so it will be in that order now it is not going to be only one shareholder it's going to be the total number of apply, apply shares or allotted shares at each stage that is going to be multiplied by the value to pay on allotment for the share and so what is going to happen is that when we get our values we do our double entries the double entry for the application is that we are receiving money on application so it's coming into our bank account as a company so we are going to debit bank and then we are going to credit application account so we are going to open account for application we are going to open an account for allotment we are going to open an account for first call and we are going to open an account for second call and what we are going to do is that at each stage the double entry is simple we debit our bank account we credit application with the application money is being received then when allotment monies are being received as a company we debit our bank account because the money will be coming into the bank and then we credit allotment account the same with the first call debit bank account credit first call account when it comes to the second call debit bank account credit second call so it is very simple it is a very simple process 
when it comes to the double entry for the issue of shares. And this is the basics. So what I want us to do now is to take a question on a basic issue of share question where there are no oversubscriptions, there are no for features of shares, and there is no um, premium or discount. And then we are just going to solve to understand the double entry for the issue of shares. And then what we are also going to do is that after solving for the double entry, I'm going to teach you how to also enter the double entry in a journal because you may be required to also show the journal entries for the issue of shares. And then after that, we'll now come back to look at other areas or other advanced areas of the issue of share concerning over subscription uh, for feature of shares and premium and discount so for now we are going to take a simple question that is going to help us to understand the double entry for the issue of shares okay so let us take this question together leonardo limited issued twenty thousand ordinary shares of no power value at two dollars each payable as follows on application 50 cents per share. On allotment, 80 cents per share. On first call, 30 cents per share. And on second and final call, 40 cents per share. Applications were received for 20,000 shares and all shares applied for were allotted to shareholders. You are required to prepare the necessary ledger accounts and extract a statement of financial position okay so this is a very simple question for leonardo limited so what we are going to do now is that we are going to do double entries for this issue of shares and then we are going to going to show the statement of financial position extract but before we proceed we have to do some workings and know the amount of money that will be received at each installment date of the issue of share process so on application we have to know the money that is received on allotment on first call and on final call and then also one thing that i want you to note is that this question says that twenty thousand shares were issued and twenty thousand shares were applied for so there were no over or under subscription so that is the meaning and, and we are allotting all the shares to them none is rejected and so that is the first assumption and that is going to help us to understand the double entries before we can think of other things okay so workings okay, so this is what we are going to do we are going to look at the amount of money that will be received at every stage so on application how much monies were received so we are saying that they will be paying 50 cents on application so 0 0.5 dollars that is the meaning times the total number of shares that were applied for. 20,000 shares were applied for. And so that is going to give us a total of $10,000 on application. So this is how much money we took on application. And then we'll look at our, on allotment how much money were received. So on allotment, when we allotted the shares to them, the question says that on allotment, they paid $0.80. Cents. So that is $0.8. And that is also going to be multiplied by 20,000 shares. Because we are told in the question that all shares applied were allotted. You can, as we move forward, we will get to a place where they will apply for more shares and we allot less. And so it's not going to be the same that is going to be multiplied at each stage. But in this question, we are told we allotted all 20,000 shares. So that is going to give us a total amount of $16,000 that was received on allotment. And then on first call, we are told that on first call, they are paying 30 cents. 30 cents, so that is 0 0.3 dollars, multiplied by 20,000 shares. Because it's assumed that when we made the call, all of them came to pay. So 0 0.3 dollars, which is 30 cents times 20,000 shares. Is going to give us six thousand dollars in total to be received on the first call and then finally on the second call second and final call we are told that they are going to pay 40 cents which is 0 0.4 dollars times twenty thousand shares because we were also not told that any of them had defaulted and so they all paid so twenty thousand shares multiplying 
um, 40 cents is going to give us $8,000. So that is what we are going to get for each of them. And so having been able to calculate this, the rest is very simple. You are going to use these figures to complete the double entry. And I have told you that when we are receiving application money, we debit the bank account and then we credit application account. We debit bank and then we credit allotment with allotment money. We debit bank, we credit first call. We debit bank, we credit second and final call. That is a double entry we are going to do. Then afterwards, we may think of a transfer. So once you can do the double entry, I'm sure you should be able to do the general entry as well because the general entry will also go in the way of the double entry. So I'm going to use these workings to prepare accounts for each of these. So I'm going to clean the workings and then I'm going to prepare the accounts. Okay, so this is my bank account. And then I'll open an account for application. So application account. I put my currency sign in there. Uh, let me make it short because there will not be much entries made in there. Then let me open another one for allotment account. And then let me also open one for first call. And then finally, let me open one account for the second and final call. So, second call account. Okay. So this is what we are going to do. We are going to make entries into this account using the figures that we have gotten. So let us begin. On application, when we did the workings, we realized that a total of $10,000 will be received on application. So this is a double entry. We debit bank, we credit application account. And so when we come to bank account, we call it application. And the amount is $10,000. So we come to the credit because every debit entry must have a corresponding credit entry. So in the application account, it will be, it will be called bank. And then we write $10,000. We are done with a double entry for application. As simple as that. And then the next one was allotment. On allotment, when we calculated, we had $16,000. And so that is also coming into the bank account. So on the debit, we write allotment, $16,000. Then we come to the credit side of allotment, and then we write bank, $16,000. This is very, very simple. And then the next one we calculated was the first call. And the amount received for first call was $6,000. So we come to the debit and we say first call in the bank account, $6,000. We come to the credit side of the first call account. We call it bank, $6,000. Very, 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 very easy. And then we come to the final one, which is the second call. The second call was $8,000 from the workings. So second and final call, $8,000. So we come to the credit side of the second call account and we will say bank, $8,000. So this is as simple as ABC. We are done with the double entry. So now what we are going to do is that now the bank account will be closed and balanced off. But the application account, the allotment first call and the second call, they are all temporary accounts. We cannot close them with a balance carry down. They do not have the going concern principle. So what we are going to do is that we have to close off all these accounts. How are we going to close them? I told you that we, they are just accounts that we used to collect capital. So now that we are done, we have to transfer all of them into the capital account. And that is going to be the ordinary share account, uh, the stated capital or the ordinary share capital account. And so I'm going to create an account called stated capital account. 
or ordinary share capital account, any way that you want to call it. And now we are going to transfer all these amounts into the ordinary share capital account or the stated capital account. And so I'm going to do this. After doing the double entry, the next tax is to transfer all these temporary accounts balances into the stated capital account so that you can now close off these accounts. And so let me open the account for stated capital. So I'll call this account stated capital account. And then I'll put in my currency sign, which is the dollar. And then this is what I'm going to do now. I have to push all these figures in there. And so in transfer, we are just going to write on the debit side of the application account to close it so that we can transfer into the stated capital. So when I come to the application account on the debit side, I'll see stated capital. Take note, we are not going to close this account to the balance carry down. We call it stated capital and we write the same amount, 10,000, to close it off. So once we have called this stated capital, every debit entry must have a corresponding credit entry. So the corresponding entry comes to the credit side of the stated capital in the name of application. $10,000. So that is what we are going to do for all the others. That are temporary accounts. So we transfer from allotment to stated capital. We transfer from first call to stated capital in that order. So when we come to the allotment account, the amount is 16000 So we call it stated capital so that we can close it off. We, we are transferring it. Stated capital. So it must appear on the credit here as allotment in the stated capital account. 16000 And then we transfer from first call. So the same procedure. Stated capital, 6000 So we can close off this account. And then to the credit of stated capital, we say first call, 6000 And then finally, in the second call, we are going to transfer to stated capital, 8000 So we close it off. And then we come to the credit side of the stated capital account. 8,000. So that is how it's going to be. So we are done with closing the temporary accounts. So what we are going to do now is that we are going to close the bank account and the stated capital account. So let us do that. Now, in closing of the bank account, we are going to make sure the two sides are equal. And so we are going to add them. When you add, you see that the total is $40,000 for the debit. And that means the credit is also going to be $40,000. And if that is the case, then we are going to have a balance carried down on the bank account, $40,000. And we are going to have a balance brought down also as $40,000 on the bank account. And then we come to the stated capital. Then we balance that off as well. Balance carried down is going to be $40,000. So what we are saying is that we do not use the balance carry down to balance the application allotment and the cost because they are temporary accounts. But when it comes to the bank and the stated capital, it's going to be used continuously in the book. So we are going to balance them off with the going concern principle, which is the balance carry down. So after doing this, they will now come back to say balance brought down is $40,000. So now we are done with the question. But we were told to do a statement of financial position extract. Don't let that be too confusing for you because we don't have much assets and liabilities over here. The only thing we have is that we have one asset, which is the bank account, and then we have a capital. And the capital is, is 40000 the bank is 40000 So the balance sheet or the statement of financial position has already balanced in advance. So this is what we are going to do. We are just going to say statement of financial position extract. It's just an extract, okay? It's not a full statement. So we are just going to show how this is going to be recorded. So we start to show with the assets. Now, with the assets, we have just one asset, which is bank. And that is $40,000. So we are going to close it off like this. And then that is the only asset we have. And so we can say it was financed by our stated capital which is also 
thousand dollars and so it has balanced so it's not any big deal it's just to show how these two will go but the most important thing is that you should be able to do your double entries and then you should be able to transfer these things into the stated capital and then you are done with this question i'm sure your understanding has come alive and i'm happy about that what we are going to do now is i'm going to show you how to go about the general entries with this same question. I'm going to assume that the question also told us to do general entries. And so for every double entry we have done, we'll do a general for that. So I may clean the board, I'm going to draft a general entry, but I'll remember every double entry we have done, and I'm going to use that to show you how you will do the general entries in case you are required. When we are done with the general entry, then we can proceed to some more complex questions concerning the issue of shares. Okay. And so let us um, do this. Let's assume this is our general entry. So we have um, a debit and a credit for the general debit, credit, particulars, general, general. put my currency sign dollars now what i'm going to do now is i'm not going to do a complete general i'm going to show you how the entries are to be made okay so that we, you know so for the question that we just solved we started by debiting bank we credited application with application money of ten thousand debit bank credit allotment debit bank credit first call debit bank credit second call so when you are coming into the general you are going to show all those four double entries in the general and you narrate them except the question told you that narrations are not required and so what you are going to do is that you and when you are coming into the general for all the double entries that we are going to transfer the account that received or that the debit entry the account that received the debit entry will come first just like we did for correction of errors and so in the first instance, it was debit bank credit application. So bank will be written first because bank was debited. So with $10,000, so it should show on the debit side. And remember how to record in the general. You don't record it straight. You slant it. And so we slant it, and then the credit was for application. So we credit application with the 10000 And then you narrate it. This is application money received. So you can see being application monies received then you underline it neatly make sure you don't cross to the other side just underline it on the part at the particulars column then you are done so you are going to do the same for bank and allotment debit bank credit allotment being allotment monies received bank first call being first call monies received bank second call being second call monies received i'm not going to do that i'm just want going to show you the, how to record the general entries for the transfers as well so you are going to do same for bank uh, allotment first call and second call so i'm assuming you can do that let us look at how to do the transfers now in the transfers we transfer the money from allotment uh, application to stated capital from allotment to stated capital from first call to stated capital and from second call to stated capital so what we are going to do is that we are going to show that here and i've told you that the account that was debited should be written first so in that case application was debited in the name of stated capital and then we credited the stated capital account so we are going to write application first when we get there so it will be application debited with ten thousand, and then we are going to credit the stated capital with ten thousand. Then you say, being application money transferred to stated capital. So that is how you are going to narrate this. Being application money transferred to stated capital or ordinary share capital. Then you can underline that. So you do the same for allotment you transfer allotment and stated capital there is a being allotment money transferred so what i'm just trying to let you understand is that for every double entry that you do you can do a general entry for that but if the question has not required you to do general entries don't waste your time on the general entries some questions may not even require the double entry that we did it will just require the general entries 
Okay, so you have to be smart that the, the double entry is the same that we transfer into the general. And then when it comes to the statement of financial position extract, you know it's very simple. Okay, so I'm sure your understanding has been enhanced a little. This is the part one of our video on the issue of shares. We are going to bring you the part two. In the, in the part two of this lesson, we are going to talk about over subscription, forfeiture of shares, reissue of forfeited shares, and the share deals account, how they work. And then we are going to use that to enhance our understanding and be complete as far as the knowledge on accounting of issue of shares is concerned. Remember to subscribe to this channel, share this video, and until we meet again another time for the part two, it is bye for now.